the Team VVV Awards 2018, sponsored by Ben Green Racing and Thrustmaster. Hello viewers and welcome to another of our Team VVV podcast for the Team VVV Awards 2018. And the core category is best handling. Very subjective, very tricky to talk about. Uh, I'm joined, of course, by Martin. Hi, guys. And Kevin. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, guys. So we've got a we've got our nominations here: MXGP3, MotoGP17, Project Cars 2, GT Sport, WRC7, and F1 2017. Rather interesting mix of games there. Um, kicking off then with MXGP3, uh, Martin, you reviewed this. Uh, tell me, uh, how have they moved forward in the handling in MXGP3? Um, yeah, generally, I think um, the physics just felt um, a lot more intuitive in the MXGP3 than the last game. Um, the bikes just felt more responsive. Um, and just generally, master and, bike, master and bike games have this a, a really intuitive setup with the um, combination of the um, two analog sticks where you control both the bike and the rider's weight simultaneously. Um, so as ever, there's three different handling modes with... Um, you know, regular, semi-pro, and professional, so you can cater it to how you want, so you have a more realistic simulation-style setting or more forgiving um, arcade um, experience, uh, which I think yeah. is good. So there's a lot of um, customizability there. Um, I think, too, what really elevates it, though, is, of course, the dynamic track deformation. Oh, yes. That really did affect the physics in, a, I think, a very profound way. Um, you know, you have to constantly adjust your... Um, uh, bike and ride away accordingly, just um, based on the terrain, and that really did make a big difference. Mm -hmm. um, so certainly, I think it felt a lot more intuitive and realistic than before. And um, I think, yeah, I think just generally since Ride Two, milestone bike racing games have really come a long way. Yeah, I agree. I mean, MXGP Three for me was was so different from Two. Mm. With Two, you, it you felt like you weren't really fighting against the mud, you know, the ruts. With three, uh, you know, as soon as you get on there, it's it's so different from two. It, it, you're constantly battling against these ruts, and yep. you know, it's 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 so much more fun, and and uh, you know, it was such a step up in in terms of everything, really. But handling was certainly one of those areas that mm -hmm. uh, stood out for me with MXGP three. It just felt so much more lively and and real, and so much more interesting and fun, I guess. You know, so it was uh, it was a fantastic step up for me and you know as of all milestone titles lately you know we have seen this amazing step up not only in terms of graphics and sound but also in terms of uh, handling so it's really good so yeah yeah i think it's very smooth very subtle uh, they worked a lot on suspension uh you know in terms of how it looked and how it worked with the environment i think that, that having the the deformable ground added a lot to the 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 challenge of, of making physics that worked in these conditions and i think overall they did a a solid job so a good step forward there from milestone in terms of their physics back on to moto gp 17 <clears throat> their uh, original graphics engine uh, martin what do you think of moto gp 17 how do you think they've improved there um again quite similar uh, fitting to MX GP3, you just get a much better overall sense of what the bike's doing. Um, it's just a lot more, I think the physics of a bit more detail than before. Um, I think one of our complaints as well with past Motor GP games is they do tend to understeer a bit too much, whereas they finally fix that in Motor GP17, and that made the game um, just a lot more fun to play. Um, I think I've Kind of said this before in another podcast, but the combination of the better audio effects as well, and also the smoother frame rate, you get yeah. a much better sense of um, just how insanely powerful these machines are, and also the sense of speed. Um, so I think that in combination really did make a big difference to me um, in mm -hmm. terms of, uh, for the handling. Um, there's, there's something satisfying about these MotoGP games once you get into a flow. Yeah, you, know, like, you need a lot of track knowledge. You need to really spend a lot of time. On these tracks getting the most out of them once you've got your head around the handling you know particularly if you're going from a four-wheeled game to a two-wheeled game it's a different mindset once you get that yeah. mindset once you hook up the apexes once you get that nice flow is there's nothing quite like it is there it's that same satisfaction it's that same sense of satisfaction you got in ride two and i think they've yeah. um, borrowed elements from ride two for the physics and that 
to me that really did improve it just mm. made it a lot more fun to play and less frustrating yeah absolutely so steps forward like you say understeer that was one of my key issues with previous a previous version uh, and overall maybe the frame rate even helps as well for the console version just in overall feeling of the physics uh, and the visual detail you're getting back moving on then to project cars 2 this is a big one uh, they've got a lot of variety in their uh, types of handling, rally cross, as well as track cars. Uh, Martin, what were your thoughts on Project Cars 2? Um, I guess I'll get this out of the way. It's it's inconsistent sometimes um, yeah. the, when they've implemented the handling. And um, in some cases, you do have to take the time to set up the car properly, um, which is a little bit frustrating sometimes if you just want to go in and pick up and play it. But Mm -hmm. Project Cars 2 really isn't a game designed for that. It's really designed for um, yeah, the really hardcore enthusiasts. And I think for that audience, it it, it does deliver. Um, fortunately, I think the setups are reasonably intuitive because you've got the new race engineer that um, sort of sorts out for you depending on your problems. That's that's a relief. I think if it didn't have that, <laughs> I wouldn't hold it in our high regard. Um, but yeah, I think in terms of um just realism authenticity um project cars 2 is probably the best in its class um for that on consoles at least um you know project cars 1 was a very important uh, release in that it brought hardcore racing simulations to consoles for the first time and um you know project cars 2 really builds on that and like i said that variety of vehicles no two driving experiences the same in this game um I think probably the word I used to, I used to describe it is um, unforgiving. Though it, it really keeps you on your toes, um, but it's still more intuitive than the first game. Um, there are so many times where um, you'd lose grip, but um, the physics weren't intuitive enough to catch the slide. But in Project Cars 2, they actually fixed that. Um, so for me, it was, it's more intuitive, but it's also more realistic and more hardcore. But, um, yeah, it ticks a lot of boxes to me, Project Cars 2's um, handling. Kevin, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, it's interesting that you, you mentioned, uh, Martin, about being a, a sort of real motorsports uh, or, or hardcore racers um, game because it's it's not always immediately intuitive, these cars. Some of them need dialing in. Uh, fortunately, the, there are sort of three different flavours, as they call them, of uh, false feedback, which is a really nice feature added. Um, but, yeah, I think this game is probably better suited to a wheel over a controller. Oh, and yeah. really... It's one of those games that you, you know, it's a little bit rough around the edges, dare I say it, and it needs a bit of tuning in uh, pretty much for each car, and it does take a little bit of time to adjust to the handling of each vehicle to, to get the best out of. So it's a little bit rough around the edges, but uh, it's, you know, in terms of the sheer uh, quantity of cars and different handling attached to each, um, you know, it certainly is uh, a nice uh, a game that you can really get your sort of teeth into. Mm, I mean, Project Cars is a mixed batch, uh, mixed bag for me. Um, I mean, <clears throat> we go back to release, uh, you know, some cars, some GT cars handle great. Carts handled fine in an early development build. Mm. They handled terrible in the release build, yeah. you know, and that's quite frustrating for me as a reviewer as well when I've played a game that's completely different to what viewers end up playing. Um, <clears throat> inconsistency. I mean, when you first play the game, I remember my wheel, my, my brakes kept locking. And it's like, oh, you need to go into the braking and reduce the braking. Why do I need to do that? Yeah, you know, can you imagine if you went out to a car shop and you bought a car and you're braking to leave the the shop and the guy says, Oh, do you know what you need to do? You need to get your brakes fixed. Go down the road, there's a body shop down there. But I'm buying a new car. And buy it shouldn't the brakes be working? Yes, but there's a body shop around the corner, they'll do that. I mean, it's just the point that when you're buying a game, the basics should be in place. And it just things like that are strange and unfinished in that sense in terms of handling in terms of the controller handling it's it's a mixed bag as well some cars handle fine i mean i did a, i've done a lot of races with a controller right and get round. i've had a lot of times with a controller though where you know it's more stressful to play with a controller because you're having to be quite sensitive with your inputs uh, -huh. uh so i think with controller practice you can get there yeah but they've still not found the sweet spot you know, and anywhere near some, you know, the next game we're going to talk about in terms of controller yep. uh, input. So Project Cars 2, it's got some wonderful handling at times. It's got some pretty awful handling at other times. Um, 
you know, it's certainly an interesting selection. Uh, next game is Gran Turismo Sport. Now, Gran Turismo Sport doesn't necessarily have the range that Project Cars 2 have. And sometimes we say, well, have they bit off more than they can chew in Project Cars 2 with some areas? But GT Sport is uh, is very impressive. And uh, I guess I'll talk a bit about this first because I, I've played quite a bit of GT Sport. Firstly, you have Thrustmaster TGT wheel, which has the the tactile transducer in it which is a real game changer in terms of the feeling you get of the tactile road surface it's absolutely brilliant it gives you a feeling of a car moving over the road that no other wheel has ever given you because wheels normally give you force feedback as in resistance they don't give you tactile feedback of the road surface and in that sense it feels amazing but what's brilliant about Gran Turismo Sport is how well it works with the controller absolutely faultless it's intuitive and faultless. And my lap times, yeah, I might be... I mean, I, I really couldn't say if I'm faster with a controller or a wheel. Mm -hmm. But I can place the car with a controller exactly where I want to. I'm obviously more comfortable with a wheel because that's how I like to drive and I feel more relaxed when I'm using the wheel. But having said that, I've had some cracking races and streams with the control pad and it's been brilliant with a controller as well. So... Uh, in terms of vehicle handling, uh, in terms of input, that's one thing. In terms of vehicle handling, physics, input, movement of the car, I think that Gran Turismo feels amazingly realistic. And a good example was last year, I went out to the Porsche training center for a Forza Motorsport event. And um, I came out of that and thought, isn't Gran Turismo realistic? <laughs> um, and I, I went back and I was playing Gran Turismo with the Porsche. And it felt really similar, you know, really, really similar. And there's so many of these so-called sims where you get in a real car and you get on the sim and you fall off the track in two seconds. Mm. Gran Turismo, you don't. Driving's a little bit easier than I think than it is in games because they don't communicate what the car's doing well enough. Uh, whereas Gran Turismo's really got good communication with the car in terms of the feeling and the handling. And I'm sure there's a lot of sim purists that will disagree with me out there and they're welcome to their own opinion. But I think uh, you know, they've, they've really found a nice sweet spot in terms of playability, in terms of gameplay, in terms of sim feel, in terms of logic of the way the car works. Uh, everything handles as you feel it sort of should so far. I've played in Gran Turismo Sport and I'm very impressed with it. Um, Martin, your thoughts on GT Sport? Um, yeah, I think overall GT Sport gets um, the best balance out of the out of um, you know, authenticity and enjoyment factor. Really, um, I think there probably are more realistic racing simulations out there, but you know, Gran Turismo has to cater for a much wider audience. Um, you know, it is supposed to be the leading PlayStation 4 racing game, but I think it's realistic enough um, so that you still get that satisfaction that, um, and sort of illusion that you're driving a real car. Um, it's definitely got more pick up and play factor than Project Cars 2. Um, you don't really have to fill around with the settings to make it feel um, intuitive. So, yeah, for me, GT Sport definitely a highlight. Yep, uh, Kevin, you've played a fair bit of it. Uh, of course, GT Sport, you're feeling on the handling. Fantastic, in a nutshell. Um, you know, with a wheel or a controller, you're going to be just as quick either way. It, it has, but I guess that's what we expect with Gran Turismo. It's going to work fantastically well with a controller. Uh, I guess it was the wheel handling that really surprised me more so than the controller handling, just how well it translated and, you know, the force feedback works nicely. Uh, with Project Cars 2, I, I found there was an adjustment period when I got on there. It took me time to adjust to the physics, uh, which I don't get with Gran Turismo Sport. Uh, nor do I with Assetto Corsa, for example. So I, I, I sort of I regard the Gran Turismo Sport very highly, uh, the handling very highly, and almost, you know it's as intuitive as, as Assetto Corsa for me. It does feel you know realistic enough to provide a, you know an authentic experience. Um, so yeah, for me it's a fantastic handling game. I, I just can't fault it basically. So obviously Project Cars Two and GT Sport are the big hitters there, no doubt about it. Uh, Let's talk a bit about WRC7 now. WRC7, big surprise. Uh, it's WRC7, I'm, I'm going to start talking about this one as well. It's a game with a mixed bag. When it when the game launched, I loved it. For the mm. first month, I loved it. And then they did something to the handling in around November time. Nobody's talking about. 
Nobody's talking about it. The handling changed. Handling has changed completely. It's not as good now as it was, rather strangely. No, I agree. Uh, it's done something to it. And I, yeah, yeah Kevin, you, your thoughts? It feels, for me, it feels more twitchy. I was controlling WRC7 uh, with 540 degrees of rotation and then going down to 360 on a wet track, for example. And it felt fantastic. Uh, with, with this update, whenever it was, um, it just feels overly twitchy. And I feel that the force feedback to me doesn't translate the road surface as well so it's it's sadly taken steps backwards from the launch title which was fantastic yeah uh, so you know it's a shame isn't it because this could be up this could be well in this award if it wasn't perhaps for the uh the update yeah. that uh, seems to be holding it back doesn't it absolutely i mean it could be this could be a contender for the winner based on the handling i was playing last year it was intuitive yeah. it felt really good uh, and they've done something to make the cars really pointy uh, completely yeah. altered uh, the way the cars point and move in terms of through the stage. And it's a lot less realistic now than it was, which is strange as well. It makes me wonder whether they've done something for the eSports side of things. Possibly, uh, yeah. But certainly not working for me uh, as a racing fan. And I, I remember making a stream and my I got went on the game, having not played it for a while, so I put my wheel on and my wheel was all over the place. I couldn't control the game properly. Um and you know i've never found a sweet spot with it again so that's certainly an interesting one martin any quick thoughts on wrc7 um yeah i mean like you said they've they've done something under the bonnet that's um changed it quite significantly um to the point where the cars you, you don't feel like you have that same sense of um precision um which is a shame because before that you know wrc7 um sort of targeted the simulation crowd more so than the um any other game in the series before that uh, developed by killer tom um yeah, they really ramped up the realism and the sense of weight in the cars as well was you know, really noticeably better than the last um game um wc6 the previous year and um yeah it just made the game so much more satisfying to play um yeah because spent hours just um sliding the car around monte carlo with a grin on my face you know um but yeah, I think hopefully next year um, we'll definitely see it um, fulfil its potential more. Mm, absolutely. Well, WRC7 then. Um, and so moving on now to F1 2017. I've played the most of this one, so I'll talk a bit about this. F1 has gone through a bit of a changing uh, sort of cycle. In F1 2015, I complained that the rear wheels were too spinny. You'd spin up the rear wheels too easily. Uh, you were needing to opposite lock around almost every corner, and I, you know, I'm I'm a straight talker. I'm a straight talker with Codemasters about why what I thought about it. Codemasters weren't very happy uh, with all that. weren't very keen on me covering F1 2016, but I stand by what I say. They improved it in 20 F1 2016, and they've proved it again in F1 2017. For me, in F1 2017, the car still doesn't have enough grip. The traction isn't quite right. The wheels spin up. For me when they shouldn't it's still got a gamey type of handling rather than full-on simulation some people disagree with me there's still too much speed through corners with opposite lock you know a lot of drivers are very smooth and progressive through the corner and there's two styles really i guess you can be quite aggressive or you can be smoother but when you're being aggressive you're usually slower uh, yeah. and that's the thing about f1 you know Aggression doesn't mean smoothness. Uh, it doesn't mean speed. Sorry, they're, they're two no. very different elements. And I think they've got an excellent structure to the handling in Formula One. But I still think there's room for improvement in getting that traction model just right. And you know, to an extent, that probably changes throughout a Grand Prix in terms of your your weight of your car and your fuel and your your tires. But it's still for me not quite there. And I mean, you know, you can say arguably, well, you haven't driven a Formula One car. Um, but, you know, Martin, you've been in uh, Formula cars and you get we get various days out and experience and training here. And, and then you mm. have just the plain logic of watching an onboard video of a guy driving around the track and saying, oh, look, our guy was quicker on the game doing opposite lock, a bit of opposite lock through those six corners. But in real life, the guy didn't. He was smooth on the power and all the people of opposite lock were slower because they were correcting a mistake. So in that sense, there's there's a solid model there, but it's not quite simulating it as it should be i think there's actually more grip more traction than that is obviously it's always going to be very different in a game because they, they almost make the game harder uh, to drive than real life in many ways you know in real life you have other challenges such as risk of death you know but um the f1 2017 then i think a solid uh, uh 
solid handling model and of course Codemasters always do a very good job of converting that to the controller as well yep. so that's our games in line for best handling um i think the two that stand out of course we've got project cars 2 gt sport but uh, martin uh, tell me your thoughts who's your winner um overall i think it has to be gt sport uh, to be honest it's um like i said before it has it really achieves a great balance of authenticity and just plain fun factor um you know, it feels smooth it feels intuitive it feels satisfying um yeah project class 2 just it's a shame that you have to spend so much time um in the setup option sometimes just to get the handling to be the way it should be um i still think there's a lot of satisfaction though when you do get it right in project cars 2 um you know it really rewards player skill i think um but yeah for me gt sport uh, is the overall winner kevin what are your thoughts yeah, for me, it's it, GT Sport is a clear winner. It's it's immediately intuitive. It's fun. It translates well, whether you're using a controller or a wheel. Um, you know, it's a good sense of weight to the cars, no matter which sort of style of car you're driving. Uh, it simulates understeer, oversteer pretty well. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it ticks more boxes than any other title on this nominations list for me, and that's why I'm going to be voting it uh, the best handling of the year. So that's two votes for GT Sport. Uh, and it's interesting, you know, it has been close between those two games, isn't it? I mean, Project Cars 2 has some cars in it that handle phenomenally well, and I showed, discussed some of that on the videos last year. Some cars need to be dialed in, uh, which means that they don't handle well. You've got to dial them. But there is this kind of myth in sim racing that when you play a game and it doesn't work properly, you need to go to your settings. Oh, but, you know, you shouldn't expect a car to handle well out of the box, sim racers say. You shouldn't expect the wheel settings to be right, shouldn't you? Why shouldn't you? Why should you shouldn't expect someone to have put a competent basic handling model on every single car that's there. That's a bit frustrating to me. And that's where Project Cars isn't reaching its own potential there in terms of what we had at launch, which is frustrating. Gran Turismo, however, has less cars, but they've had a lot more time on them and refined them. And they've understood what beginners need as well as experts to get the most out of your car and it's amazing what experts can get out of it but as i say when i've been driving with a wheel and i've you know i've raced around and i thought you know there's a cracking simulation model in here as well working it, they really have done a good job at improving it all the time uh, and it's not just about you know this award isn't just about the most realistic simulation model it's about the no. most intuitive model that takes everything together and balances it because let's face it Handling is, you know, it's the eye of the beholder in terms of what actually works. No game here has perfect handling. No game has perfect simulation physics because you need to communicate that to the player. And in that sense, GT Sport is the winner and the winner of the Best Handling Award for Team VV Awards 2018. So fantastic uh, for Jeep Gran Turismo Sport. Uh, great work by the team at Polyphony and Kazanori and his crew. They really have done a cracking job at bringing that together and well done to them and that concludes our video podcast uh, for best handling uh, thanks for your time chaps and there'll be more from us very soon the team vvv awards 2018 sponsored by ben green racing and thrustmaster <laughs>